Hello, my name is Jamie Whittaker and I belong to the Christadelphian Church in Morpeth, Northumberland. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also to go onto the Facebook page for more of the Gospel Online series. Well, in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to speak to you about introducing Jesus in simple terms. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about three titles or names that Jesus is given in the Bible and see what we can learn uh, about him from them. So let's have a look at those titles. And the first one we're going to have a look at is Jesus Christ. The second one is Son of God. And the third one is Son of Man. Uh, here's the first quotation we're going to look at from Luke chapter 1. And this is the angel talking to Mary, words that we're quite familiar with from Christmas. Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And Matthew's gospel adds, for he will save his people from their sins, because that's what the name Jesus means. It means uh, God will save. So the name Jesus was given to him by God because he had this mission to save people from their sins. But Jesus's full title was actually Jesus Christ. Uh, and Christ just means king. It's the Greek word for the old Hebrew word Messiah, which also just meant king. I, th I think I'm right in saying that Jesus only actually once told somebody he was the Messiah, the king, and that was to a very faithful woman who wasn't actually Jewish. In fact, the kind of introduction I gave to you at the beginning of this video, hello, my name is and I am, was the kind of thing Jesus rarely ever did. He didn't say, hello, I'm Jesus Christ and I'm the Messiah or I'm the Son of God. He just preached the gospel, performed miracles, and it was up to people to think for themselves about who he really was. And it's no different today. In many ways, at the time, Jesus didn't actually seem like a king. He was born into poverty. He was a poor itinerant preacher. He was executed as a criminal. But the charge against him that he was crucified for was that he was a king. Over his head on the cross, there was a plaque which read, this is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. And some people at the time said, no, 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 don't put, he said, this is the king of the Jews, but that he said he was the king of the Jews. Uh, but Pilate said, what I have written, I have written, and the sign stayed, and it was right. According to the Bible, he was a king, although he didn't look like one. He'd never sat on a throne. In fact, he was on a cross. But if we go back to that quotation from Luke chapter 1 and read on, the words of the angel to Mary, he went on to say, he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Jesus was born into the kingly line in Israel. His ancestor was King David who lived about a thousand years before. So the great promise of the Bible about Jesus is about the future, that Jesus will return from heaven to be king on David's throne in Jerusalem when he rules over God's kingdom forever. Well, the second title we're going to have a look at to do with Jesus is Son of God. Uh, one more verse from that quotation in Luke chapter 1. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. So the Bible clearly teaches us that Jesus was the son of God. But again, when he was preaching to the people, Jesus himself never explicitly told anyone that he was the son of God. What he did was to point out, point to all the things that witnessed to who he was. His words and his message, the Old Testament prophecies about him, and his works, his miracles. I mean, you might think that if you were trying to provide evidence that he was God's son, he would have done better to have brought his, 
Joseph and Mary out in front of the crowds to publicly swear to the fact that he was God's son. But I'm not sure that even that would have convinced his critics. Because he was God's son, Jesus showed us what God is like. And some people could recognize that fact. God sent him to save us from our sins and from death itself. The third title that the Bible uses about Jesus is Son of Man. Now, this is a title that Jesus used of himself quite often. Jesus was Son of God, but he was also Son of Man. This means he represented God, but he also represented man. He was a man, just like other men. He had the same strains, the same joys, the same desires, the same temptations, the same aches and pains. So there was always this tension in Jesus, as there is in every Christian who is trying to follow his example, that he loved his father uh, more than anybody else. He was committed to following God's way every minute of every day. But because he was a man, there was a pull in a different direction towards what he wanted as a man with human nature. And this tension in Jesus came to its climax the night before his crucifixion. He knew what was coming. He knew his mission was to save, was to give his perfect life as a willing sacrifice to save others. But there was a problem. He was so conflicted. He was battling with himself to submit to this part of God's plan for him. He wanted to more than anything, but like everyone, he had his own will and he was afraid in the moment and he was weak. He even asked God if what he called this cup of suffering could pass from me. This is one of his prayers from the Garden of Gethsemane to his father. He said, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. He was the son of man. So on one level, we can empathize with him because we know fear and despair and weakness too. But he ultimately won this battle of wills and did lay down his life as a willing sacrifice on the cross. But his crucifixion, wasn't the end of the story. And that's why we're still talking about Jesus Christ today. Jesus is not our savior because he willingly died for us. Other amazing people uh, have given their lives for other people or comrades. But he is our savior because he never sinned. He didn't deserve to die, but willingly gave his life. And so God resurrected him and gave him eternal life. He has broken out of the prison house of death and through him we have hope of doing the same when he returns to the earth to set up God's kingdom and to judge the living and the dead. Well I think it's appropriate to finish with some words of Jesus himself about his work and this is what he said. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Uh, and he went on to say, and this is about his uh, resurrection, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in the which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So in summary, we have seen that Jesus was and is Jesus Christ, which means God will save and the king. He has opened the way to eternal life and he will rule over God's kingdom on the earth. He was and is God's son. His birth was unique and he was God's only begotten son. He showed us what God is like. He was also son of man. He shared our human nature so that he could overcome it for us by pleasing God rather than pleasing himself. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this talk. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, uh, to leave your comments below. 
uh, and also to press the notification button um, so that you're aware of other videos in this series. <laughs>